Hello, welcome to your weekly astrology, what we call it, transits, <laughs> weather, I was going to say weather, it's kind of a weather, but it's like a transit, so um, let's dive right in, all right, we're going to, I'm going to go to yesterday, because yesterday, um, the sun, we're looking at our, our uh, chart here, the biggest change, the sun moved, changed signs, moved into Pisces yesterday, and it's on the, the 19th. And, you know, we have a leap year this month, you know, leap day, leap year. So we'll have one more day of um, February. But we always like to look for some of the sign changes. So now we talked about last week, we have this big pile up, a little stellium here in Aquarius. You know, we have the, the last outer planet, and uh, Pluto here. And then we have Venus and Mars, and you can see they're going to join up. We'll get there in a second. And then Mercury is heading toward the end of it, and we have the sun that was right at the end, and now it just moved into Pisces. So Pisces, you know, we're, we're changing signs, and each sign is so different than the next. It's almost like the opposite of the one before. So we go from that Aquarius, um, uh, it's kind of like, it's not a, a, I'm gonna take one for the team. It's like, I'm just gonna excuse myself while I go work on things for humanity. Kind of, kind of a, an energy of egalitarian, far removed, um, doing it differently. It's not the status quo, it's like the new status quo. So we're going from a lot of that with the, you know, one outer planet and, and the, the three, you know, inner ones closest to the sun. And now the sun is moving to much more of the, you know, it's moving into that realm of Pisces, of feeling, of compassion, the ultimate ocean, disassociating, blending in, not fighting, not resisting the flow. So that being said, let's move to today. And we see, we have a few changes this week. Today, well, actually the last couple of days of yesterday, you know, early yesterday, we had the moon like to just highlight this as much as I can, just to get a little reflection of where the moon is. So moon's in Cancer today, moon's in Cancer yesterday and today, and it's going to be moving through Leo, Virgo, and uh, Libra this week. So we're into those um, more other-oriented signs, we could say. But anyway, the moon is in Cancer, so a lot more feeling. It's in its home place. It's, you know, we'll probably be a little bit more compassionate, a little more patience, understanding, or at least we should. <laughs> Maybe if you got enough sleep the night before. But it's just a much more feeling, feeling sign. You know, for two and a half days, we could be a little bit more feeling oriented. So that's that's happening there. But then we also have, as we know, we have this grouping here, what I've said several times already <laughs> in Aquarius. So when the moon moves into Leo, we're going to oppose all of that. So I'm just kind of setting up the stage a little bit because sometimes the moon, you know, we've got the, the moon is maybe the, the main, oh, maybe the main player this week. Although we do have some sign changes, you know, we had, um, you know, you see the sun and you could say Mercury is going to be just a few days before that changes signs. But look at here now today. Look at here. <laughs> we have our, our we have um, Venus and Mars meeting up. They're not you know at at, at this point they're not exact by the minutes, but it, it'll get there. But the lovers and you know the Venus Mars meeting up. Um, but they're not in like the most lovey sign. This is in in Aquarius, and we were just talking about Aquarius. You know, it's it's ruled by Saturn. It's, you know, I go by the older rulerships, you know, modern rulership, we put, we throw Uranus in there and that's, that's, that's just equally as upsetting, <laughs> if not more so, but um, both Saturn ruled signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, they're both cold and dry. So, you know, it'll kick up symptoms of, you know, um, dehydration, um, cold. Uh, lack of mucus or extra thick mucus because we're not hydrating that mucus membranes. And then uh, in Aquarius, uh, we could also have vein problems, venous return, um, low oxygenated blood, uh, poor quality blood, poor quality blood symptoms. So all of this is kind of heating up. I shouldn't say heating up. All of this is um, 
kind of um, being accentuated with both of these signs with you know all of that being in in um Capricorn now, you know, as it moves into Aquarius. So we kind of get this every year. Um, but nonetheless, it's still those are cold, dry symptoms that are aggravated no matter what hemisphere, you know, north or south hemisphere, you know, summer or winter, that's those are things that are aggravated. Okay, so moon um, finishing up in, in cancer. And it, you know, um, today, uh, yesterday and today, you know, with it's in Cancer, that's a water sign, and then it it missed the trine over to, to the sun. It was already into you know far into uh, Cancer, but um, it did make that that little nice nicey nicey trine with uh, Saturn a few you know maybe a day or you know, several hours ago wherever you're at in here. And then as the moon, let's see, right now it's like five o'clock on Tuesday, so in a few hours it will trine over to Neptune. So if you're listening to this tonight or if you listen to it later and you wonder why you had some um, prophetic dreams, uh, maybe you talk to somebody that's very prophetic, um, maybe your intuition is hitting on some things or maybe you got confirmation or validation, that feeling moon in, in Cancer is trining over to um, Neptune in its own sign in Pisces. So every month, you know, while we still have Neptune in Pisces, um, you know, and it's going to go all the way to 29 degrees and then it'll retrograde back. So it's going to be there a little bit. I think it's 2025. I forget what month that it goes into Aries. But every month, twice a month, you know, when we have the moon in Cancer or in Scorpio, it will make trines over to Neptune. So keep keep that kind of in mind because that's when you will hone in on some of your intuitive flashes, intuitive knowingness, gut level feelings, um, confirmations or not confirmation on something. So anyway, that's going to that could that could be a monthly thing that you just might want to tune into. So anyway, I wanted to mention that because that's, you know, going to be as the moon moves around, it will make those trines, you know, when it hits the water signs over to Neptune. And then it'll conjunct Neptune, you know, when it's in Pisces and the moon rolls around here and it will be right on that. So it'll also be intuitive, but it could also be with Neptune, you also you get a little double edged sword. So know which side, you know where your blade is, <laughs> you know, and if it's one one sharpened or two or both sides sharpened, but Neptune can also be where you get uh, uh, pie in the sky ideas, the spin doctors telling you how good it is and it isn't. Um, it could be nebulous. It could be uh, tricking you. It could be um, not the right information that you're getting and it, don't just use your your you know your feelings. I mean, you get a gut feeling, but just check it with some logic or with a few other sources. All right. Um. Let's see here. My. I want to do. Sorry, my microphone just decided to switch. I hope it didn't um, make the sound any bit any different or weird. I apologize if it did. All right, let's move on here. So we have <clears throat> moving into Wednesday. Um, well, we, we talked about the Venus, the Venus, Mars, and look, they're moving together. So we get it again. They were at five degrees and they're moving together. <laughs> so we'll have this little effect for a couple of days. <clears throat> so uh, what else with this that I wanted to tell you about with my notes? Um, well, it could be very creative. You know, we could have a, you know, with, with Venus and Mars together in Aquarius, it could help bring out more creativity um, without being sidetracked into emotional drama or love drama, maybe. <laughs> it's like, uh, again, it's not a very sexy feeling, touchy feeling kind of sign. So this energy will be more into Aquarian things, you know, what's good for all. Um, how how do I put order in in something? How, how can I you know, use my creativity? How can I, you know, focus that drive Mars energy into this creativeness of Venus, but it's in more 
idealistic than passion than, than like passionate areas. I don't know if that that says exactly, but it um, it, it'll you, you, it'll be, it's more of a thinking than it is a feeling uh, coming together. You know, it's just kind of a, an odd one, but um, use it like we can. Use whatever we can there. Okay, so now we have the moon moving into Leo, and it's going to be, you know, as soon as it moved in, it, it had to, to oppose Pluto. And we can see here, it's just going to start to oppose Venus and Mars. So there could be a little, oh, it, it, it could be slightly odd, a, a little bit of like, um, Leo moon wants attention, wants to be gregarious and pay attention to me, I'm on stage, but you guys are over there thinking through something and you're not paying attention to me <laughs> kind of energy. It's a little bit of a of a push pull like that. So don't lose sight of your creativity as the moon is kind of making, you know, some non. Ooh, um, it's not partial kind of, <laughs> uh, but it's going to be making some aspects <clears throat> opposing all of this. Look at uh, five o'clock Wednesday. It'll be kind of going through all of this here over to Pluto and then over Venus and Mars. And then on, um, as it goes in, let's see how it goes the next day. If it, yeah, I don't, let's see where it, um, no, it, it, it's like, it's still in, in, still in Leo. So it's not going to oppose Mercury until it moves into the next sign. Interesting. All right, let me go back a day. All right, so uh, Wednesday, we talked about that. And now coming into Thursday, We've got, um, let me just go a couple hours here. Depends on where you're at. Uh, it's going to mess it up. All right, we'll just go around here, bring it up this way. All right, there we go. It's just easier to see when it's like up rather than the bottom part. Okay, Mercury moves into Pisces and it's going to catch up with the sun. Let me just move it over here. It's just, a little, I like it this way. Easier to see, <laughs> easier to explain. Let me go back to days. So let me wonder why I'm not moving here. Okay, so Mercury moves into Pisces. So the poet, the dreamer, the um, if you looked at some of the other videos I've done, we found when we did the musicians, a lot of musicians have Mercury or the Moon in Pisces. It's like, you know, with with the Mercury in Pisces, it's like a think feel because Mercury is like you know thinking and communicating, but with Pisces, it's a feel. It's a feeling. Drummers, I think we saw a lot of drummers with, uh, you know, Mercury and Pisces. You know, so they feel that. They, they don't have to think about it. They're constantly doing one and two and one and two in their heads. They don't even have to think about it. They're, it's just it's just going that one and two and, mm, and down. One and, you know, it's like going on inside of them. Or they're tapping their foot. And they don't even know it. You know, it's like um, they're just feeling that. Or the poet, you know, writing poetry or dreamer or dreaming things. But this is going to be a little bit more of a practical. This is bringing it more into practicality um, here. I'll look at the moon in a second. So on Friday, you know, we've got this moving in. Um, we've had the, so we're, I'll look at here. We're getting this little pile up now of Pisces. Look at that. We've still got these, this group. We've got two groups here. We got, we got the, the Aquarians and the Pisceans. <laughs> We still have this Aquarius stuff here. And then look at the Venus and Mars are moving along. They were what, five degrees when they moved in? Six, seven, eight before they start to pull away. Let's see if it goes to nine. No, Venus moves ahead. So you saw, let me go back. You saw Venus go. Okay, see, so here today on Tuesday, you see Venus here five degrees and it's the, it's behind Mars. See, cause this is, you can see Mars is the higher degree. They're both five, but you see Mars is at 48 and Venus is at five minutes. So when I go ahead a day, you'll see it, they both moved together. Venus is still behind Mars. And then here, Venus goes over Mars and they're moving, still moving together, but Venus has got a little faster orbit, um, which we know is she's got the faster orbit because it's closer to the sun takes her about three quarters of a year to go around the sun where it takes Mars two years. So here we go on uh, Thursday, they're still lined up and then there they are Friday and then Venus pulls ahead to see. It, but anyway, let's go back here. So we've got this little group in this 
creative energy and now we get the feeling coming in so this is very interesting we're going to end this this month very kind of some in, interesting lineups right here this is what you're going to see perfect mercury the sun and saturn now right now on friday it was we're coming into the full moon <laughs> um what time is it uh this, the moon will move like five degrees virgo actually let me let me line it up so we can see that uh no let me just let me talk about this first because it's going to move to a different time all right <laughs> sorry um the sun the sun here is like at the midpoint between mercury and saturn so it's like halfway between them it's like you know it would be four and a half degrees right it's halfway between zero and nine you know four and a half four and four is eight half half this is nine okay so we're right here it's like right in the middle of that well we haven't talked a lot about midpoints but it's kind of a stressful point we've talked about planets in the bends you know when they're you know like a, the, the moon nodes and you got something you know squaring it you know, it's in the bends there well it's right in the middle and it's kind of a stress point so the sun is here and we've got mercury communicative blah 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 blah, blah on one side saturn on the other so here's the sun it's got a two-year-old on one side and the aging father on the other, just to kind of give you something going on. So the two-year-old's just squawking and yelling and blah, 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 and then dad is forgetting and, you know, doing different things here. So it's kind of a stressful place for the sun, but it's very compassionate. So we have this compassionate energy, and then all of this stuff is going to get closer to Neptune. But what's going to be interesting is there's going to be exact alignment with all of these three players as right at the end of the month. I'll show it to you today. We'll come to it next week and we'll see it exactly but we'll prep you a little bit but what is this energy this is communications it's vitality the sun you know the vital force it's saturn um structure and order communicate vitality with some structure put structure um into vitality and communicate it um make communication make structured communication vital so however we want to play with these words this is what's happening and the tone is a piscean tone okay so it's like we, we put the outfit of mother Teresa on this we put the compassionate robes on all of this it's not just random communication about structure and order it's it's a much more compassionate uh, structure and order. I think and uh, if we look at a mundane astrology at the globe but right now, the world is waking up to all the shenanigans, people in very high places that do not relate with you and me have been making decisions for us. And the people, the populace are rising up and uh, figuring it out and starting to do things about it. Um, there's a lot of things going on that I'm not going to really talk about because they'll yank me off of YouTube, but um, there's a lot of other people that, that are talking about stuff, but I'll just stick with the astrology. But the world is waking up to a lot of the shenanigans and a lot of the wool that's been pulled over our eyes for way too long. And when we're getting <clears throat> some of these alignments, we get some pretty keen days of things happening. So check this out. Um, Oh, let's just stay here for a second because I want to get to the full moon. Let's get to the full moon. Do, do, there we go. All right, so looky here. Looky here. Um, it's like late. It's uh, like late Friday or Saturday when, when we have that. Uh, it's like 7 in the morning here. So we can see the moon <clears throat> and the, the sun and the moon opposing. Whenever the moon is opposite of the sun, it's full because the sun is shining its light over there. When it's when the moon is next to the sun, it's it's being hidden. You can't see it. Like right now, we can't see Mercury because it's being um, the the sun is too intense. Even right before sunrise, you know, it's two degrees ahead of, but it's still the sun is way too bright to even see the little teeny spark of Mercury before the sun would rise. I, you probably can't even see the, the Venus and Mars either. It's still too close to the sun. Maybe if, if you have a real, you know, have the atmosphere right and a good uh, telescope, you may, may, but probably not. 
Okay, but here, look at this this little group here we've got that we've got happening. Um, it's getting closer, but let's look. I see, I wanted you to see the moon over here. So we got the moon. Um, the moon was opposing. Remember, we, we saw it opposing Venus and Mars, and now it's going to oppose this little group here. But then Venus is also, you can see it's also going to be a square over to your um, Jupiter. So be careful. You can see here it's within a, it's within a degree. You know, if I click it the next day, it'll be perfect. But um, I'll show you in a second. But anyway, so Venus, what you want squaring something large, careful of overspending, over speculating, over committing, um, saying you're going to do something because you feel sorry for somebody or something rather than really doing it. So watch for that and make sure that you're sincere on that, um, that square, you know, um, and then maybe we don't, it's like, be careful you don't take things too far or um, stuff can be coming real fast here because we're watching the planets getting a little closer and a lot of things happening. So as we get toward the weekend and, you know, and it's a full moon, things could be coming really fast and really accelerated. So keep, keep your cool, keep, um, keep feet on the ground. Okay. Let's say that. Um, so busy, you know, the moon busy, um, uh, the virgo -y nervousness, you know, with, with that, uh, opposition there with the sun, you know, in compassionate Pisces. Okay, so we're moving on here. Let's go, oh, I got it by hours. Let's just go back to the days here. All right, so as we're coming to the end of the week, we got the weekend, now we can see, um, so we still have Mercury, um, the sun, and Saturn. So Mercury is going to be going faster. Let's just, let me see if there's anything else I want to tell you about on the Saturday. Um, well, once the moon gets into Libra, then, you know, we, we've got some, some trines get coming over to, you know, all of the Aquarius stuff. So, so we can see here the, the south nodes in um, Libra. So that might be interesting, uh, the moon going over the south node. But once it's over here, we know that that's an air sign, right? Air. And then all of this stuff, Venus, Mercury, I mean, sorry, Venus, Mars, Pluto in Aquarius, air. So then we get toward the end of the week. I mean, the end of the weekend and beginning of next week, the moon will be giving some trine aspects. So, so some of the heaviness will kind of go away. So some of the heaviness will start to go away near the end of the week. But check out this lineup as we get right near the end of the month. All right, so right near, we're just coming off of that moon. Um, and let me just get over here and we'll watch, let's see, we're the 26th. Okay, I want you to look over here. Look here at Mercury, the Sun, and Saturn. So we got Mercury at five. Mercury's going to be going pretty quick now. Sun is at seven, and you know it's a degree a day. So in two days, it will be right on top of Saturn. So let me just do that and look how quick Mercury's moving. Look, it's like two, day, two degrees that day. And then on the 28th, which we'll get to next week more, but it's just right here, right at the end of the month that I can't not um, I can't ignore this because this is a very interesting lineup. Sun, Mercury, Saturn, all together. Look at this lineup, and they're all in Pisces. So this is, if you saw this as it was coming closer this week, you know, when the Sun was in between these two, um, it's starting to dredge up a lot of I, I, I like to think of it as a lot of spiritual uh, inclinations, you know, the sun bringing, you know, that compassionate of Pisces, communicating it, you know, Mercury, that communication of that, and then Saturn, maybe doing the right thing, maybe a lot of communication about doing the right thing, you know, don't do a shitty job, go the extra mile. Um, you see somebody less fortunate than yourself, you know, do something, you know, it doesn't have to be much, but this is the kind of things that makes us unique as humans, that we can have compassion toward lesser people or take some steps to make things better in people's lives. So this is a very interesting work, uh, interesting thing. And then anything that's not working, um, anything that's like you're holding back, this will break that through. <laughs> it, it's like, that that compassion is just going on this you know the, all of this is going to be swallowed up in the sun you know that sun is just going to shine out you know this stuff is in the heart of the sun 
um, and and it's they're all heading toward you know they're everything's heading now toward this you know compassion moving toward that um, that higher consciousness. Let's just put it that way. Neptune in 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 Pisces in compassion. All right, let me go back a little bit and then we'll end up this week. But on the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to close this down. And then I have something very interesting about trying to find how to find different things for yourself for the year. I, I, I'll show you a different way to look, to look some things up for yourself. Um, but anyway, let's go back to here. We're Sunday. And then let me go to, to Monday. And then we'll be back next Tuesday. All right. So to wrap up this week, our moon started over in, in, um, you know, this week in um, cancer. So it, it kind of has that compassionate feeling, you know, and we started to get some of the trines of the moon like today, you know, over in, in the, in the cancer and then making those uh, trines over to the, the Pisces planets. Okay. And then as we go, um, you know, and then it goes through Leo and then it will oppose all of the Aquarius planets. You know, and we have the our our lineup of, of Venus and Mars, and they were all week they were traveling together. It started um when did they get together? Like Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, late Wednesday into Thursday, depending on where you are on the planet. And then they moved together, you know, because Mars is ahead. Um it, it was ahead of Venus, and then you know, Venus has a faster orbit, so is it was starting to pass Mars, Mars clicked to the next sign. So they were traveling the same degree. They were like five degrees, six degrees, seven degrees, eight degrees, I think nine. And then, then Venus pulled ahead. So moon uh, opposing all of that. Um, you can watch, watch the moon here this week. And then Venus, you know, we have the Venus square over to um, uh, large Jupiter. So making sure that you don't overextend say things that you know overcommit oh yeah i'll do that oh crap why did i say that you know so just maybe remind yourself um about all the compassionate things you probably will feel it you know it's probably going to be a feeling of that because we have all this stuff starting to move into pisces here you know we're getting that 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 um we're getting more of the weight balance moving into that and into the female signs Okay, um, anything else I have for you this week? I talked about that square, talked about that. Um, and then, uh, I talked, okay, then Mars. Okay, so then Mars will then make a square. There it is here on the Monday. First Venus, then Mars will make the square to, to Jupiter. So again, this is going to indicate a lot going on. It's going to be like too much. There's too much going on, you know, it's, you know, Mars action uh and then jupiter large and earthy uh and so we got a lot of stuff going on earth uh and then air <laughs> uh all this stuff and it could be a sappy end of the week all right and um let's say i talked about the 28th that lineup all in nine degrees pisces sun saturn and um mercury which is kind of crazy um, and then the moon, as it moves into, as we finish up here, then the moon will go into Libra. Um, uh, yeah, then it will get like more relationship oriented. It goes over the south node into Libra. Well, we'll save that to next week. There's too much. Okay, so I hope that uh, helps you to make through and navigate this week. We got some really interesting alignments. So maybe make a few notes as we're heading on to these. And then um, skip over to the next video and I'll show you how to, um, I've got a chart and I'll show you how to, to find some things to, to uh, set yourself up to see what's going on for the year. We'll use an ephemeris and a chart. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.